it is legal truism in political and international law that all acts and proceedings of the legislative, executive, and judicial departments of a de facto government are good and valid. The question is whether or not the governments established in these islands under the names of the Philippine Executive Commission and Republic of the Philippines during the Japanese military occupation or regime were de facto governments. If they were, the judicial acts and proceedings of those governments remain good and valid even after the liberation or reoccupation of the Philippines by the American and Filipino forces. There are several kinds of de facto governments. The first, or government de facto in a proper legal sense, is that government that gets possession and control of or usurps by force or by the voice of the majority the rightful legal governments and maintains itself against the will of the latter, such as the government of England under the Commonwealth, first by Parliament and later by Cromwell as protector. The second is that which is established and maintained by military forces who invade and occupy a territory of the enemy in the course of war and which is denominated a government of paramount force as the cases of Castine in Maine which was reduced to British possession in the War of 1812 and Tampico, Mexico occupied during the war with Mexico by the troops of the United States. And the third is that established as an independent government by the inhabitants of a country who rise in insurrection against the parent state. Speaking of government de facto of the second kind, the Supreme Court of the United States in the case of Thorington v. Smith said, But there is another description of government called also by publicists or government de facto but which perhaps may be more aptly denominated as a government of paramount force. Its distinguishing characteristics are number one, that its existence is maintained by active military power within the territory and against the rightful authority of an established and lawful government. And number two, actual governments of this sort are established over districts differing greatly in extent and conditions. They are usually administered directly by military authority, but they may also be administered by civil authority supported more or less directly by military force. This is a situation of temporary possession of territory by lawful and regular governments at war with the country of which the territory so possessed was part. The powers and duties of de facto governments of this description are regulated in Section 3 of the Hague Conventions of 1907. It provides that the authority of the legislative power having actually passed into the hands of the occupant, the latter shall take steps in his power to re-establish and ensure, as far as practicable, public order and safety, while respecting, unless absolutely prevented, the laws in force in the country. According to the precepts of the Hague Conventions, as the belligerent occupant has a right and is burdened with the duty to ensure public order and safety during his military occupation, he possesses all the powers of a de facto government and he can suspend the old laws and promulgate new ones and make such changes in the old as he may see fit. But he is enjoined to respect unless absolutely prevented by the circumstances prevailing in the occupied territory the municipal laws in force in that country, that is, those laws which enforce public order and regulate social and commercial life of that country. On the other hand, laws of a political nature or affecting political relations such as, among others, 
the right of assembly, the right to bear arms, the freedom of the press, and the right to travel freely in the territory occupied are considered as suspended or in abeyance during the military occupation. Although the local and civil administration of justice is suspended as a matter of course as soon as the country is militarily occupied by another country, it is not usual for the invader to take the whole administration into his own hands. In practice, the local ordinary tribunals are authorized to continue administering justice, and judges and other judicial officers are kept in their posts if they accept the authority of the belligerent occupant or are required to continue in their positions under the supervision of military or civil authorities appointed by the commander-in-chief of the occupant. These principles and practices have the sanction of all publicists who have considered the subject and have been asserted by the Supreme Court and applied by the President of the United States. The doctrine upon this subject is thus summed up by Halleck in his work on International Law, Volume 2, page 444. The right of one belligerent to occupy and govern the territory of the enemy while in its military possession is one of the incidents of war, and it flows directly from the right to conquer. We, therefore, do not look to the constitution or political institutions of the conqueror for authority to establish a government for the territory of the enemy in his possession during its military occupation, nor for the rules by which the powers of such government are regulated and limited, such authority and such rules are derived directly from the laws of war, as established by the usage of the world, and confirmed by writings of publicists and decisions of courts, in fine from the law of nations. The municipal laws of a conquered territory, or the laws which regulate private rights, continue in force during the military occupation, except so far as they are suspended or changed by the acts of conqueror. He, nevertheless, has all the powers of a de facto government and can, at his pleasure, either change the existing laws or make new ones. Thank you so much for listening. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe projectjurisprudence.com.